Hey, I'm Kinslow from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can just call me Johnny K. I'm going to be rebuilding my 671 big block Chevy blower motor for my 1953 Chevy Pearl Street car. Figure I'll just put a little mini series together and uh, let you watch it. And if it helps you out, awesome. Hey, I'm Johnny K, and this is part zero how to obtain the numbers for the static compression ratio formula for the big block Chevy. Well, throughout this mini series, I'm gonna teach you how to obtain certain numbers that you need to plug into the compression ratio formula. So let's just start with the basics. Grab your notebook and a pen, and here we go. For this example, I'm gonna use the stock 454 big block Chevy engine. Okay, number one, the crank, it's stock. Write that down, stock. Okay, that was easy. Number two, the connecting rod length. What is that? Well, you got your crank and you got a piston and that connecting rod connects the two. In the engine world, we just call those rods. We don't say connecting rods, we just call them rods because it sounds cool. Okay, so the stock rod length is 6.135. Write that down, cool. Number three, we need to know the stroke. How much that piston comes up and down inside the cylinder? Well, that's easy. You know you got a stock crank you know the rod length, so the answer is four inches, 4.000, write that down. Okay, the final thing that we need to know is how big is that bore that that piston sits in, the cylinder bore? Well, on a stock 454 motor, we know that's 4.250, write that down. Cool, you got three numbers and you know that the crank is stock. So those three numbers are numbers we're going to use in that compression ratio formula. There you go. See, it's all coming together. Okay, so there's five formulas you need to know that when combined together, they make the compression ratio come alive. There's one more thing I should mention. I'm gonna call this number six from the top of the first piston ring to the top of the piston. There's a little area of space in there. It's minute, but you should include at least two cc into your formula. When you're doing these formulas, accuracy is key. If you think your motor's nine to one compression, but you're off by about 22 cc, that's gonna make your motor really like eight to one compression, or it could be the other way, 10 to one compression. So accuracy is key. Now the other thing that's very important, now pay attention, this is important. When you're doing these formulas longhand, using your calculator, some of your numbers are going to be in cubic inches and some of your numbers are going to be in cubic centimeters. You gotta convert to either cubic inches or all cubic centimeters, okay? Remember that, because if you try plugging in to your compression ratio formula, you got cubic inches and then you're plugging in cubic centimeters, it's not gonna work, okay? So remember that, you need to convert to either all cubic inches or all cubic centimeters. Or use a simple compression ratio calculator that's on the internet, like gtsparkplugs.com. You can go to their website and you just plug in your numbers. You don't have to convert your numbers. That compression ratio calculator on the website already does that for you. But do it both ways. Why? Because you always want to double check your numbers. So do it the longhand way, write it out, use a calculator, and then go to the website and use their calculator and see if your numbers jive with each other. If they do, happy days. Here's the formulas.
Okay, so you looked at your number sweep volume, that's easy. You plug in your numbers, bang, there you go. The second one, the cylinder head. If you're using an aftermarket cylinder head, brand new, the manufacturer tells you what the CC of that head is. For the new guys, that means you turn the head upside down and you got a chamber where the two valves sit. That's called the chamber. And, and what they do to obtain that CC number is basically you'll take some white lithium grease, you smear it around the perimeter of that chamber, then you take like a plexiglass. It usually has a quarter inch hole drilled in it. You could also drill a little eighth inch hole on the opposite side, which helps to get rid of the excess air. You place that plexiglass on top of the chamber. You wiggle it around a little bit so it seats with that white lithium grease. And then they use a measuring device called a glass barrette. It's got increments on the side and they measure in one cc increments. So you just basically take, say, rubbing alcohol, add a little food coloring to it. That way the food coloring makes it easier to see if it's leaking out onto your workbench. You can see it red a lot better than clear. And using rubbing alcohol, it won't rust your parts. Anyway, so you fill up your glass barrette with rubbing alcohol with some food coloring in there, and then you basically crack the valve, it drips into that chamber, it fills the chamber up, and you make note of how many cc's it took to fill that chamber up. And that's how they figure out cc for the head. The third one's easy too, the cylinder head gasket volume. The manufacturer will tell you the actual gasket bore size, which is normally larger than the cylinder bore itself. And it will tell you when that gasket's smushed down, the crush thickness. So that's kind of a given. So those three are pretty easy to do. The deck height, in one of the videos of the mini series, I show you how to obtain that. But basically that's the pistons all the way up top dead center. You rock the piston back and forth to find true top dead center. Take a straight edge and some feeler gauges, bang. There you got the deck height volume. And then the fifth, the piston dome volume. There's several ways to figure this volume. In my particular application, I'm using a flat top piston with two valve reliefs. I'm gonna give you the quick down and dirty way how to find the piston dome volume. Okay, so basically your piston is in your block run that piston down about three inches below the top of the deck. Take that white lithium grease, about inch and a half down, smear it all around. Like, you know, when you squeeze your toothpaste, it comes out in a big gob. That's about the thickness you want smeared around. Okay, then you're going to grab a depth micrometer. Set the depth micrometer to one inch. Okay, now bring your piston back up. Your depth micrometer is sitting in the cylinder bore. Your piston's coming up, bang. That's exactly one inch below the top of the deck. Then you want to use your dial indicator. You rock the piston back and forth to make sure it's perfectly level within the cylinder bore. And then you do the same procedure. Smear some white lithium grease around the top. Put your plate on, fill it up, and make note of how many cc's it took to fill the chamber up. That's the down and dirty way of doing that. Here's a little more explanation. When I say, you know, you want the piston one inch down, that's just the number I like to use. You can use any number you want. You could have the piston half inch down or you could have the piston a quarter inch down you could have the piston an eighth inch down okay but when you plug that number into the formula you gotta make sure that if it's a half inch down you're going to multiply by half inch okay I just like to use one inch because it's a simple number it's just one perfect one times one is one okay you plugged all your numbers into the compression ratio formula and now you know the static compression ratio of your engine Cool, now you're spending your hard earned money rebuilding this motor. You wanna get the most horsepower you can, but still run on 93 octane gas. So if you go to the KB Sleevelight 
website, they have a compression slash dynamic ratio calculator. So you plug your numbers in and it spits out the compression ratio, which should match what you already figured out longhand. But then there's an additional box below it and it says to type in the length of the rod, the connecting rod, rod length, and intake valve closing. Now just a note on the website calculator, it's going to tell you add 15 to whatever your cam card number says. Just a little note, remember to do that. Well that's going to spit out another number, okay, and this is called dynamic compression. Well what's that? It's just a really big word for something to do with the relationship between the intake valve closing, the volume efficiency of your cylinder chamber, and now I'm really just opening up a big can of worms. So the condensed version of this is you want your dynamic compression to be between 8.0 to 8.5. And once again, some guy way smarter than me figured out oh, the magic number is if you can get the dynamic compression between 8.0 to 8.5. And what this means, if you're within that range, you can run your car on 93 octane and your engine's making the most horsepower it can. If the dynamic compression, if that range is in the sixes or sevens, your, your engine's a real dog. If the dynamic compression is in the 9s or 10s or 11s, you're going to run into troubles. You need high octane gas, you're talking drag race the motor. So now that you just learned the basic fundamentals of how to obtain the static compression ratio of your engine and how to select a camshaft on paper that's going to get you between 8.0 to 8.5 dynamic compression. That's the range that you're shooting for. And the KV Sleevelite website compression calculator will help you achieve that number. So with those numbers, you're going to have a pretty healthy motor just from the get-go. But this is why this is important, that you know what your compression ratio is of your motor, you know what the dynamic compression is going to be roughly on paper, and reality, you're gonna know what the cylinder pressure is. These figures that I gave you is for a naturally aspirated motor. No blower, no turbo, no nitrous. It's just the basic motor with a carburetor on it. You're going through all this trouble to build your motor. You might as well get the most horsepower you can still being able to run on 93 octane. Without any further ado, let's go to part one, disassembling the big block Chevy. Thanks, see ya.